a very good afternoon. It is a Tuesday and it has rained here in Bandung. We are waiting for our train back to Jakarta Gambir station and today that will be the Argo Parahyangan train. We're going to do that in the panoramic train. The Argo Parahyangan train is a staple among travelers between Jakarta and Bandung. The train, introduced in 2010 after a fusion of the Parahyangan Argo Gede trains, makes a number of return trips every day and is popular among the masses, even though nowadays the high-speed train is much faster. The name Parahyangan refers to the region in Western Java the train passes through, but the original meaning of the base word Rahyang is ancestral spirit or ancestral gods. That's the rest of the train and we'll do a walkthrough later on, but uh, today it's uh, this panoramic carriage with uh, more glass than a uh, roof. Let's hop on board and find our seat for this roughly two and a half hour ride. There are only 30 seats in this carriage, so there is enough space for this 2x2 layout. There is so much space that there are actual power outlets available for every seat, but they're located at quite an odd location under the seat in front of you. As you can see, personal space is sufficient though. Just after departure from Bandung, we'll pass through the city and its suburbs where the views aren't that spectacular, but that soon changes. After we've passed by the Ladang High Speed Station, the landscape starts to change drastically. Dense urban landscapes make way for green hills with rice paddies and patches of forest. You won't find any large natural areas here as the population is still quite dense, but it's much greener than you might expect from an island with some 150 million people living on it. That given, Java is also a pretty large island. It's about the size of two West Virginias if you're counting in freedom units, or the size of England or Greece for those that pay with real money. And here is the snack box. This is the same snack box as we got on the Tawan Jaya premium train a while back. You might have seen this video already. Let's open it. Ooh, that's different. This is, um, I think, chocolate, strawberry and chocolate cake. We have a pouch filled with Oh, that's, uh, that's, that's weird. This is a chicken bulgogi puff. Something new, that's good. Let's wait for our drinks. Unlike the time when the weather was nice, I didn't buy an entire meal this time. They aren't special at all and are just microwave meals you can pick up from the restaurant carriage if you like. The coffee served in the panoramic carriage is included in the ticket price, as is the snack box. Don't expect anything else though. Fortunately, it isn't a very long trip. This is for sure the most luxury toilet I've seen on any train. It's also reserved for just the passengers of the panoramic carriage, so that keeps the queue away. I'm pretty sure though you could walk into it from the executive carriage directly in front, but at least I didn't have to queue to poke my camera through the only window that can be opened. Rain or not, the price charged for a seat in this panoramic carriage was 450,000 rupiah. There also is a panoramic carriage attached to a night train, of which I don't really see the benefit of paying three times as much as an economy class seat on the same train as it's dark outside. Over the years, this Argo Parahyangan service has seen a number of upgrades. It now runs roughly 50 minutes faster because of upgraded tracks and new carriages. Trains that have the Argo in their name do get priority over other trains, which makes them the fastest trains available. And Argo is also Old Javanese for the word mountain, and the trains are indeed named after mountains or mountain ranges. What a coincidence! One return trip train also has another luxury carriage, and one or two trains will have this panoramic carriage attached. But these luxury and panoramic carriages are also added to some other trains, so no worries if you want to try them all. Please welcome to the 
Where this tunnel, the Sasaksa'a tunnel, is named the second longest here, this is no longer correct. With the opening of the high-speed train line between Jakarta and Bandung, the longest tunnel is currently on that line. It has a length of 4.4 kilometers. The old order stood for almost a century though, with both the Wilhelmina and Sasaksa'a tunnels built in the early 20th century during the Dutch colonial time. The Wilhelmina tunnel hasn't been in use since 1982, when the Banjar to Chijulang track was closed down. The Wilhelmina Tunnel, indeed named after Dutch Queen Wilhelmina, is still one of the longest tunnels in Indonesia and is a heritage site today. Pretty late in my trip, I realized that each passenger has a personal light. The switch is next to it though. That's why none of these personal lights were used during my trips. Landscapes have changed drastically in the last 20 minutes or so, as we enter the densely populated areas on the northern plains east of Jakarta. The drive here isn't at full speed, as we have to take into account intercity trains from other directions, as well as numerous commuter trains that don't have their own tracks here yet. We're passing through Chikarang station, which is currently the eastern end of the electrified network that runs as far as Rangkaspitung, about 100 kilometers west of here, as the crow flies. That is a commuter line train. I was waiting for us. Where is the sun? Where is the sun? This is uh, better for the camera, but the thing is, I don't have my station in the background.